the Blaze Radio Network. On demand. Love. Courage. Truth. Glenn Beck. Man, it's like the Fight Club. Washington, D.C., we've got three fighters. Devin Nunez, Adam Schiff, and the FBI. All in a steel cage match. They've been uh, trading punches and dropping bombs over the last 24 hours. You know, and everything rides on this memo. Why? Why does everything... Does anybody else have the the feeling... Do you remember when uh, George Bush said, we're going to release the full might and power of the U.S. military. It's it's happening Tuesday at 2 o'clock. Watch it! And we all watched it. We're like, that's that's that that's the full power and mi- might of our military. You remember that? Is it just me? What did they call that? It was uh, a shock and awe. Shock and awe. Yeah. Shock and it's awe. It's a great phrase. Right. I mean, it really built you up. To the it beginning did. Of that. And yeah. then it was like, yeah, not, not, not that. Just, I have a feeling this is what this memo is going to be. It's been built up, and <laughs> everybody's fighting over it. It's going to be like, yeah, he didn't do it. Wait, that's it? (laughs) (laughs) Got a post-it note. (laughs) Right. Look, uh, it's right here. It's a post-it note. It said, definitely don't talk to FISA. That's that's what it said. (laughs) Why do you... Uh, the document is is got everybody hot and bothered and allegedly shows the abuses by the FBI and the DOJ. Um, But we don't know. And it was written by the Republicans. The Democrats have their own. Ay, ay, ay. The FBI came out swinging yesterday, saying they have, quote, grave concerns over the accuracy of some of the information in the memo. Oh, I wonder if you had those same grave concerns over the the dossier. You know, did you put as much thought into the dossier as you did to the credibility of this memo? I'm just asking, FBI. What the FBI was saying yesterday, if I may translate, um, you know, bullcrap into English... Nah, don't pay attention to this uh, memo at all. We did nothing wrong. Devin Nunez immediately threw back a uh, counter uh, combination saying, having stonewalled Congress demands for information for nearly a year, it's no surprise to see the FBI and, and DOJ issue spurious objections to allowing the American people to see information related to the surveillance abuses at these agencies. Boom! So basically, the FBI said, don't believe the memo. We didn't do anything wrong. And I think they're maybe doing something wrong. I'm not sure. We're still looking into that. And Nunez comes back and says, yeah, well, you just don't want people to know the truth. For a while, all was quiet on the Western Front. The fighters seemed content. Then they began to circle the ring, looking at each other. And at 9 o'clock last night, Adam Schiff, with all of his credibility, came out of nowhere with a flying Superman punch. Boom! An official statement that he also tweeted, and as all official statements are, uh, uh, Schiff accused Nunez of showing an edited copy of the memo to the White House without consulting the rest of the committee. Oh, my gosh. So wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. The committee approved the memo. And then Schiff went in because the first part of his name is Schiff. Hello, T.Y. Schiff D. So, uh, so Nunez goes in and, uh, and he takes that memo and then he changes it. And the white has uh, no idea. So what does Nunez say? Nunez say, uh, says, dude, I added some commas and dotted the I's, crossed a few T's. I fixed a few minor things, you know, that the FBI suggested. This is what, this is what our great republic has turned into. An official of the Trump administration has said the memo will likely be released sometime today. So we're either going to see the mother of all political bombs or, you know, something that's like, huh. And then we all move on. Whether this memo is partisan or not, 
It is by definition. Whether the Democrats are scared of political blowback, which they are, and whether the FBI is nervous about losing credibility, not much left to lose, guys. What we now need is full transparencies, transparency on all sides. So by all means, release the Nunez Moab, but also release the Democrats rebuttal memo and the FBI should do the same. Wouldn't it be refreshing to have actual transparency? I get the feeling that all of the political back and forth over this memo is nothing more than the trash talk that fighters do is, you know, you know, you know, two weeks when they're still trying to, you know, drum up ticket sales. The louder they are, the more they try to build up the hype. It usually reveals a really boring fight when it's all said and done. But we're all about to find out soon. White House says perhaps today. It's Thursday, February 1st. This is the Glenn Beck program. So we're confusing it all? I mean, you know, well, I'm, I'm doing a chalkboard on this today. Oh, good. I'm doing a chalkboard on this today because, I, I mean, I'm having a hard time finding, uh, following all of this. And so, I mean, I know there's people going, I don't really know the memo thing. I thought I understood it. I don't know if I understand who are all these people. We're doing a chalkboard today. So you can just, you can have an intelligent conversation with people on, on what the hell is going on. One of the, I think, most interesting parts about this that people aren't talking about is Adam Schiff writes this note about um, that, that Devin Nunez altered the memo that mm-hmm. was approved in, in, in the committee and then went to the president. And what that, it's hard to kind of explain this, but the, the big takeaway from that is if Adam Schiff was writing a memo, that was at least 30 seconds, a minute, that he wasn't on television, <laughs> which <laughs> has never before occurred. That is, I, you know, I never thought of it that way. That I had to bring, yeah, unless he is, wrote the memo while good. he was on television, which, which I would not po- put past him. Could have been that mm. while he was at CNN, he said, <laughs> I'll do, I'll do some television here. Why don't you write something in this memo? Right. It's, it po- that, it's yeah. possible he just signed yeah. it. I mean, I think if you look back at his recent CNN appearances, you may see his hands out of screen typing. Yeah. Uh, and that may have yeah, been the moment been. where he was doing the memo. Yeah. Like, I've never seen a guy who is on television. I mean, you're a host. And you're I'm on host, television. And you're less. way less than, than Adam Schiff. <laughs> I, this guy cannot be actually right. doing the job of a congressman. Huh. But uh, it's, an, it's so crazy because this memo has become such a big thing. And, the re- and it's really, it really is pretty meaningless. It this might is, be. Well, we, we don't, don't know, know what's in it. Wait, yet. wait, wait. Yes. We don't know what's in it, but it also is not the smoking gun. It might say, and there's a smoking gun over here, and we've all seen it, and it has big blacked out mar- bars, and it also says big blacked out bars. Right. You know what I mean? Could easily say that. So it, it is something that describes as much as they can for national security, describes something that someone, all Republicans, have seen. Well, okay, that's that's good. That's good testimony. May I cross-examine, Your Honor? And the answer to that is, at this point, no. No. They don't no. want any cross-examination of right. it. I mean, if you think about this from the typical Law & Order episode, it's like you're he- seeing only one side of the case here. Yeah. And of course, as you know, in Law & Order, whenever you, whatever case you hear last is the one you believe. It's important to hear both of them, though. Well, I, I, you know, I think the Republicans, the, the Republicans' point is, yeah, well, all we keep hearing on television is... Totally. The, and, and, and I totally agree with that. And let's... I, I, I just... I don't want to become them. I don't want yeah. to become them. No, and, I, and look, I don't think necessarily it's bad that this gets released... Again, we don't know what's in it. I hope that there are adults making some sort of decision based on national security rather than their political uh, futures. I, I, I'm not particularly optimistic about that on either side. But uh, the idea that this is, it's not going to be a smoking gun. It, it, it should give us some information on the way that they're thinking about this. It's going to give you the Republican case here. You're going to be able to at least know where one side stands with some of their evidence. But again, Nunez hasn't seen the evidence. And the president can just declassify the underlying evidence if he wants to. Probably not a good idea for him to do that because... No, especially 
I mean, this is my biggest problem with this memo. It's not that it's, you know, uh, created by a committee of, you know, uh, politicians. Um, my biggest problem is if it is accurate, which, I mean, Nunez has credibility. Yeah. Um, uh, if it is accurate, does this hurt the investigation? I mean, don't do something for the short term for your, for your you know, political ratings. Don't do it. Do, wait. If it is true, then wait for the investigation and make sure that you just keep picking. You know, real power comes from having information people don't know you have. That's where real yeah, power that's comes a from. Great point. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Do not play all of your cards. <laughs> don't play all of your cards. Why would you do that? Uh, I don't know. I mean, you know, maybe they think they're getting out in front of something. Um, but I will say this because we we have the Democrats who who are good at this, and Donald Trump who is good at this, which by like controlling the media cycle and kind of winning a hype a hype cycle here. Republican Congress has actually done that here. I mean, yes. this, this, the yes. release the memo thing, whether you think there's something legitimate in there or not, it's obviously nonsense. They, the Republicans could vote to release it. Mm -hmm. The Republican president could vote to release mm -hmm. it. When they were saying release the memo, who were they saying it to? Themselves. Nobody. Themselves. 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 And the fact that they've been able to, to, to create hype around a partisan memo is pretty amazing. And well, it's will worked well. I will tell you this. We have become everything we've despised in many ways. We're playing the same game that they have always played. And it looks like it's working for us. So is that a good thing? I mean, no. <laughs> Generally speaking, it's not a good thing. However, we shouldn't just, just because it's written by a Republican. You shouldn't and just because it. they put a fake sort of hype around it, which they did. They packaged it, right? Mm -hmm. They packaged this into this big thing. That doesn't mean that the information inside of it is faulty. It doesn't mean that the information inside of it isn't valuable. It very well, well might be. We just don't know yet. I, I will tell you that, I mean, I'm going to be really, really disappointed uh, if it's like, and the <laughs> FBI is doing some bad stuff. <laughs> the buildup has been pretty significant. It's been significant. But, and the pushback has been significant. Yes. Which, which you know, if if there wasn't anything in it, don't you think the Democrats would be like, release it, man? Right. No, there's uh, right. You think there's something probably in it? Yeah, there's gotta uh, be. And the FBI pushing back against it. I mean, that was made into a big deal yesterday. Is it is it rare for the FBI to make a public statement like that? Yeah, it is. But they're the ones being accused, essentially. So you know, I'm not surprised the FBI would say. Hey, you know, we don't think this is accurate. It's the the rumor is at least that the, they're saying the FBI really screwed up. So I wouldn't be surprised that they're uh, fighting back. But remember, the guy running the FBI now is not Comey. This is a guy that John Donald Trump nominated and was passed. What was it, ninety eight to two mm -hmm. uh, through the Senate? Mm -hmm. So this is not a controversial figure. It's not a holdover from Obama. This is this is Trump's guy who is saying he does he thinks there's problems with the accuracy of this memo. Now, maybe he's just defending his guys in the FBI. You can make that argument, I, I guess. Um, but I mean, he's I always been a very, known as a very credible guy. And it's why, think about this, a Donald Trump nominee sailed through the Senate. That's not, that's not common. Yeah. You know, I mean, people like to push back against Trump. I mean, there was, there's been people who have been incredible uh, judges and, and, and nominees that he, he's had trouble getting through because he's Donald Trump. Ray, there was no problem with getting uh, with well, getting maybe it's because maybe that's why. Because he was deep state the whole time. He oh. was deep state the whole time. <laughs> oh. yes. It's what they want you to think. But sometimes they want you to think the opposite. I'm only I'm only whispering because they can't hear me when I whisper. Because they're listening everywhere. Right. Alexa. <laughs> Simply safe. The home security company um, that uh, is, is, is really changing everything. Um, they have transformed the fa into the fastest growing home security company in the nation. They protect now over 2 million homes and businesses. Uh, everything that they have done has been revolutionary. And now, just as they're really gaining steam, they have 
uh, release their brand new home security system. I mean, it's completely redesigned and rebuilt. They've added all kinds of new safety features to it, safeguards uh, to guard against power outages and down Wi-Fi, cut landlines. Um, they've tried everything they could to destroy it, everything in between. And, um, uh, and it still gets the signal out and it still alerts police. It still takes a picture of the guy with the baseball bat or the gun or whatever. It's the all new Simply Safe. It was redesigned to be practically invisible and it costs you the same great price. 24 7 protection is only $14.99 a month and there's no contract. So there's no wires because it's all wireless. You own it, which means there's no strings attached because there's no contract. Supply is limited. Go right now and see. In fact, scroll down on the page and see how much you will save. I mean, over the next three months compared to the other guys who are going to come in and wire your house. SimplySafeBeck.com. Go there now to order at SimplySafeBeck.com. Protect your home. Protect your family the smart way. SimplySafeBeck.com. Glenn Beck Mercury. Glenn Beck. There's a couple of cool science stories. Uh, one is, um, have you heard about the big void in the pyramid, the Great Pyramid of, uh, of Giza? Yes, I've okay. heard of it. All right, so there's the Grand Gallery, which is you, you can you know walk through this Grand Gallery that goes up to, I don't even know, I think it's the burial chamber or whatever the hell it is. <laughs> and um, um, right above it is uh, this, what they're calling a big void. It's this gigantic room in the middle of the pyramid that they didn't know was there. And they've only found it through new techniques of being able to scan the pyramid. And they, they can see this huge void, but they don't know what it is. And um, it's at an angle. It appears to be at an angle, which would mean it's another great gallery, another staircase, which would lead you into yet another void, which might be something else that we don't know what is in there. There's two of these rooms they would, you know, to find it, you'd have to take the pyramid apart. Here comes cool science. They're taking a uh, a blimp, a little blimp, and they're rolling it up. They're taking a teeny digital camera, high definition camera, and a teeny teeny light, and then a blimp, and they're wrapping it around like a pole. They're going to drill a hole up into the ground, uh, into the void. They're going to shove that blimp up fill it with helium and then it will take off the light will go on and it will survey this whole thing with high definition camera uh so we don't ever have to go into it you'll be able to see what's in it plus whatever's in there can't escape because that's right. the more important right. thing <laughs> right <laughs> unless of course it can a teeny little sneak out of a little it, drill it, hole it, <laughs> or it might have you know maybe what's left in there is a little teeny blimp pilot <laughs> be <laughs> terrible. Be That's the be last thing you'd want in yeah. there. Would be a tiny blimp pilot, <laughs> just waiting, just waiting, just for, some, waiting. for some idiot culture <laughs> to stick a blimp up there. And he's been so, he's been walking around for like five thousand years, going nobody's this stupid. I'm sorry. Like there's a blimp gonna show up all of a sudden. <laughs> the worst thing would be torture because he would be able to fly the blimp, but there'd be no hole big enough <laughs> to get, the to get it out. out. So he just he'd be just able to be <laughs> He'll be bumping up against the side. I'm going to ram it really hard this time. <laughs> All right. So probably anyway, wouldn't work. Probably no, wouldn't. No. 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 Uh, but uh, we'll see him. <laughs> we'll see him. He'd be like a little Keebler elf. Well, we, I mean, we all know what's going to be inside there, right? Which is nothing. There's going to be a giant bunch of nothing in there because whatever's Maybe been there. Maybe we could put Geraldo Rivera in yeah. there for some other <laughs> culture to find. <laughs> it's just a collection of Geraldo Rivera selfies with his shirt <laughs> off at 70. <laughs> what if we find out he's not 70 and he's like 5,700? <laughs> and he, <laughs> he escaped from a little drill hole in the other pyramid. Um, there's also this, um, the shield that protects the earth from solar radiation is under attack from within. We can't prevent it, but we should prepare. This is, uh, uh, the sub headline that is coming from, uh, scientists all around the world. They are saying that, you know, every, what is it? Every 200,000 or 300,000 years, the 
poles shift. The, it's a polar shift. And north becomes south, south becomes north, and it just it flips. When that happens, some people say that's where the continents all broke apart at one point. But it happens about every 300,000 years. Well, it's been 780,000 years since that has happened, so we're well overdue. Scientists are now saying that polar shift is beginning to happen. And if it does, with solar winds and everything else, we could be out of all power worldwide for several months. Panic, everybody! (laughs) No, don't. Just recycle. Just recycle. Glenn Beck. Mercury. It's the new year. And if you're like me, one of your resolutions is to get in shape. Every single year, it's the same resolution. It's 2018, and, you know, you want to look good. Your house has the same resolution. Yes, inanimate objects have goals, too. You can help your home look its best with Overstock. For years, Glenn has trusted Overstock to make his home and our studios in Dallas look great. My wife and I love Overstock as well. We use it all the time. It's our go-to when we need to furnish our home. Overstock is not a discount house with last year's leftovers. They have beautiful new furniture and decor all at Overstock prices. For this week only, Overstock is having their double savings event. There are thousands of deals up to 70% off, plus free shipping on orders over 45 bucks. Plus, when you use the offer code BECK, you'll get an additional 10% discount. It's Overstock's double savings event going on right now, only at Overstock.com. All things home, all for less. We love Overstock.com. You're going to love it too. Check it out. Overstock.com. You're listening to the Glenn Beck Program. So in your discussions of the nuclear freeze proposals, I urge you to beware the temptation of pride, the temptation of blithely uh, declaring yourselves above it all and label both sides equally at fault, to ignore the facts of history and the aggressive impulses of an evil empire, to simply call the arms race a giant misunderstanding and thereby remove yourself from the struggle between right and wrong and good and evil. Is wrong. That was the evil empire speech by Ronald Reagan. I remember it. I remember it clearly because I was working in Washington, D.C. at the time at WPGC. And uh, I remember seeing the, the top of the Washington Monument, the, the blinking light, and thinking, I think I'm in the blast zone. I'm 19 years old. I'm waiting for the teletype. Every time the bells ring, it's an old news thing, but the the teletype would deliver our news and, and it would have up to 12 bells and 12 bells meant war. And I remember waiting, counting the bells. Because I really thought we were going to war. Ronald Reagan was a master at playing the, uh, the communists. And perhaps Donald Trump is the same. I hope he is. Because what I heard in the State of the Union address, and we spoke about this a little bit yesterday, um, was, was a little frightening. Um, because we are dealing with something that we haven't seen in our lifetime. If there is war, it will not be like the war is now. My daughter Mary and I were watching the State of the Union, and I, and, and I heard this whole layout of North Korea, and I said, I think we're being prepared for war. And my daughter said, well, Dad, we're already at war. Not like this. This is entirely different. This is a million dead, perhaps in the first opening hours. Now, I'm hoping that everything that is going on right now is positioning. I've always wanted a, a president with a twitchy eye. Not, not, a twi- not a twitchy eye internally, just a twitchy eye for our adversaries, you know? When, when he says, yeah, I've got my nuke buttons bigger than yours, I want them to go, holy cow, he's just crazy enough, he just might do it. That's the best kind of thing you can have. A stable leader 
that has convinced everybody, yeah, I'm not afraid of it. Because then they know they don't have any power. And if they're bluffing, you win. It's what happened with the Soviet Union. Is this the same with Kim Jong-un? I'm not sure. Now, there's some things that I, I want to point out that I think show that this is a masterful bluff on the part of the Trump administration. There is a story that, is, uh, that came out, uh, let me look here, when, when did this come out? A couple of weeks ago. Um, and it came out in, in, uh, on a website called The um, uh, Aviationist. And the aviationist was reporting that they heard unusual activity in the skies of Missouri and B-2 bombers were practicing a bombing run. And one of the guys who apparently has, you know, some credibility said, I, I heard the bombing run and I recorded it. And he said, I missed the part where they were talking about the North Korea's uh, North Korean leadership. He said, but that's what they were saying on an open channel with the, the B-2 bombers. Here's a bit of the bombing run as recorded by the aviationist just a few weeks ago. Bombing run that sounds like it's a trial run on North Korea. Listen. Fast weapon with 15 millisecond fusing. Target is command post. Directed time-sensitive target past earliest TOT for both. Building is a 60 by 70. Coordinates are centroid. That's correct with the BAT-71. You have that task. Mojo, BAT-71. We were unsuccessful. Dippy ID, Alpha, November, Papa, Sierra, zero, 01. We'll be retargeting in DT. Okay. So they were, they were doing a mock run on a command post. The, the guy who recorded this said, I just missed when they were talking about the North Korean uh, post. Now here's, this is spooking a lot of people. Um, but if you're in the military, you ever, you ever flew for the military. And I know because I have uh, military pilots on staff so i know this stuff um there's something wrong here and and what's wrong is this was recorded on a civilian uhf am band well you the military doesn't use that if the military was using that they were using that for a reason there are two boxes um, in, you know, uh, in, in the cabin of a, of a flight deck. And there is the civilian band. And that is the band that you can listen to where the pilots are all talking to each other and you're hearing all pilots in the sky. And you're hearing uh, ground control talk to, to everybody. And you have to wait and you're just listening your whole time for your tail number. And you pop in when there's quiet and you talk to uh, the tower. That's, that is a, a crowded band as it is. And you know all the time that there's somebody approaching because you're able to hear the approach. You're able to hear the pilot talk to the, uh, the tower or, or control, ground control. And so you know everybody where everybody is. Well, I could have fighters on the back of, uh, of a plane. Uh, and, in, and, and if they're cloaked, I'm not seeing them if, you know, if they're not showing up on my radar, I'm not seeing them and I'm not hearing them because in a military plane, there's another box on top and all of the military stuff is encoded and secure and only the military is communicating with the military. No one can hear what they're saying. And if they want to communicate, if they're coming up on the back of a commercial airliner and they're saying, you know, there's trouble and, uh, you know, a, a terrorist has uh, control, they pop down off of their band into the civilian band and they, and band, and they, and they say, you know, uh, American Airlines 23, 
Uh, this is the uh, U.S. Air Force. We are on your tail. Land. So there's no chance of them pressing the wrong button nope. or uh, having the no dial way. on the wrong. No They're way. two separate things. They're completely separate boxes. So for this to pop down onto a UHF AM band is intentional. So the thought is, if I'm reading you right here, thought is that they intentionally put, got this out there so that word would get to North Korea that they're serious. Potentially. Maybe, potentially. Potentially. But I'm sure North Korea has the same situation. They're not communicating on a civilian band. I, I, don't, I don't know. But this is not an error. There's just no way this is an error. You just don't make that error. Could it be, you know, a, a civilian impersonating uh, a, you know, uh, a military exercise? Maybe, maybe. But I, uh, but from what I understand, the uh, military did uh, confirm that there were runs over Missouri at this time. So maybe somebody's doing that. But but of course, this aviation expert would probably know that. Would probably know that. Would probably know that. I, I, I only bring this up because we, we have to watch what's happening in North Korea. And there is an awful lot of posturing. And um, it, it, it may be real. It, it may not be. Um, but I, I just want to keep an eye on North Korea and what's happening with North Korea. Because it's much more serious than um, anything else. You have to mentally prepare that war with North Korea is not anything like the wars that we have seen even Vietnam. This is a, this is a war that will happen um, quickly. Lots of people will die quickly. Our air superiority is not going to be like it was over Baghdad. These are people that have prepared for war against the United States, against us for 50 years. Their surface-to-air missile defenses... We have never come across anything like this. And I'm not saying that we're not going to, you know, we wouldn't dominate, but it will take time. Um, you know, we, as we're carving out a path through their, your, their air defenses, they are starting to shell uh, Seoul. And if they start to shell Seoul, we're not going to be able to, we're not going to be able to do it because our air defenses are, are elsewhere. Um, and, you know, in the end, we're victorious. But what does victory look like at the end, especially if Kim Jong-un is nuts and knows I'm dead anyway? Does he push a button that launches ICBMs? And can we knock every one of them out of the sky? Or does one hit Seoul? Does one hit Japan? Does one hit us? What does one nuclear device that we couldn't knock down. What does that mean? We're all going to be praying that the magnetic shield <laughs> just reverses. <laughs> I, just, I just want you to know that we're watching it so you don't have to, um, but we're not dismissing it. Uh, and I, I think it's important that you keep that in the back of your head, that this is, this is real. Well, it's, it's a, and it's also, I would say, a very subtle and only potential indication that there's real strategy uh, going on right now and that our country wants to send a message but also wants to avoid war if it's possible. Um, we don't necessarily, this is not, we're not rushing into it. There is not a military mind. The one thing that I think that uh, Donald Trump does do, uh, he, he listens and respects the voices of the, at the Pentagon. When it comes to war, I just don't think he's like, you know what, you guys get away. Let, 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 me, figure, let me draw this out. Right. <laughs> you know what I mean? I don't think he's doing that. He has always respected the military minds. Yeah. He loves these guys. His generals. He talks His, about them highly yeah, all the time. All the time. And he has good generals around him. Mm -hmm. And I don't know a single military man that says, oh yeah, war with North Korea, that's a cakewalk. We, we should do that. There, I, there's no one that I know that says that every single military man that I know says that's a nightmare. We'd win in the end, but that is an absolute nightmare. You talked about this uh, last night on the TV show uh, as the old new Coke and Coke classic. Yeah. And you know, new war and war classic. Unlike Coke, you don't want the classic version. <laughs> you do <laughs> not. There's unfortunately. No, you don't. No, the, no. Like the new war is, is frustrating, right? Because we don't, 
make the progress we should, and we don't treat it seriously at times, and we make too many crazy lines that 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 uh, and we're at, and we're at war, and we don't even know it because we're not really feeling it. Right on the other side, yeah, uh, a lot of these old wars uh, cost millions <laughs> and millions of lives. Yeah, and you really, uh, really felt it. Yeah, that's, that's the one where you say to the Coca Cola company, "I like New War. <laughs> I like that one. Tastes like Pepsi. You bet. I'll take it." <laughs> All right, it's Tax Identity uh, Theft Awareness Week. Are you, you have your tree up yet? I do. Did you have your Tax Identity Theft Awareness Week tree? Uh, oh. Well, we like to put it up on Tax Awareness Day. Oh, okay. So, so you guys this do it really late. We do it late, and then we we let it. We keep it up for a week after. So it's you almost know. making two weeks of Tax Identity Theft, theft Awareness week. Weeks. Yes. It's only one week, but we like to live in the glow. Anyway, <laughs> uh, if you're looking forward to your tax refund, uh, tax identity thieves may be looking forward to it as well. They may get it. What happens is the IRS um, uh, is is not as hard to spoof as you might think. All you really need is your identity. All you need is your social security number. You can file a return in, you know, in somebody else's name and claim their refund. Congratulations. And it's happening. One in four people have experienced identity theft. And if you're only monitoring your credit, your identity can be stolen in ways that you're not going to detect. Thieves can sell your information on the dark web or get your online payday loan in your name. LifeLock. They detect a wide range of identity uh, threats, and they detect the information that everybody else seems to miss. And they're going to send you an alert if something happens, and if there is a problem, a U.S.-based restoration specialist is going to work to fix it. Now, nobody can prevent all identity theft or monitor all transactions at all businesses, but at LifeLock, they uncover the threats that you might miss. So join now and get 10% off by using the promo code BECK. Call 1-800-LIFELOCK or go to lifelock.com and use the promo code BECK. That's promo code BECK at lifelock.com. Glenn Beck Mercury. Glenn Beck. This is about as much as I like sports. Uh, Stu is gone tomorrow. He's on his way to the uh, Super Bowl, and he's wearing uh, an Eagles uh, sweater, and he's got a little white spot on it. Yeah, that's true. Uh, with with paint, uh, and uh, um, th- this is the reason why I, uh, I like football and sports, and I've always liked the NFL because they always fostered this. Is that your sweater? <laughs> no, it is not. It's my grandfather's sweater. Uh, he uh, passed away fairly recently. Um, but this was his sweater from back in the day. And part of me thinks that this is the reason I like the Eagles. I don't have any idea why I like the Eagles, actually. But he used to wear this sweater all the time. And it's it's an old school sweater. I don't know if it's officially licensed merchandise either. It doesn't, I would say it doesn't seem to be. It's not the uh, Eagles. No, no. The, the sweater maker was like, no, 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 not those Eagles. This is the bird. Yeah, right. We just really like Eagles. It's, uh, it's funny, but he used to wear, he had a bunch of these different teams. And I, as a huge sports fan, I can't imagine wearing different team shirts all the time, but that's what my grandpa did. Yeah. Go Patriots. Glenn Beck. Mercury. Love. Courage. Truth. Glenn Beck. Well, House Republicans are going to have to find a new favorite prosecutor. Yesterday, Republican Trey Gowdy of South Carolina announced he's not going to run for re-election this fall. That's a bummer. Uh, He has been a representative since 2010. He was a Tea Party guy. um, And I think it's just Gowdy has had enough of Washington, D.C. He came in, he he really gained prominence in uh, 2012. He was chairman of the um, uh, special house panel that investigated the attacks on Benghazi. He found a lot of fault with the then Secretary of State Hillary Clinton and the way she handled the crisis. Through the Benghazi investigation, the House panel discovered Hillary's extra special private email server, which she used for government business. 
the email server that, um, you know, one is, is, is one of multiple excuses Democrats use to explain away Hillary's impossible loss to, uh, to Trump. That was Trey Gowdy. Um, Republicans in, in Congress like the cross-examination skills that Gowdy has uh, brought from uh, his background as a prosecutor. He is, he is one of the best. Um, he knew how to ask tough questions, precise questions, and questions that drilled down and got to the truth. Most recently, as House Oversight Committee Chairman, Gowdy has, um, has been concerned with the integrity of the FBI's investigation into possible Russia collusion. He is particularly concerned about the text messages between the two FBI agents who are close to the investigation that reveal their anti-Trump bias. That FISA memo may come out as early as today. Speculation now is that Gowdy is leaving Congress for a possible federal judgeship, which would be fantastic. So far, his office maintains that he's just going back to his private law firm in uh, South Carolina. The National uh, uh, Republican Congressional Committee chairman says Trey Gowdy exemplifies the persona of a public servant. On the other hand, you know, the Democrats said he made a mockery of the congressional oversight uh, process. That's probably that dichotomy is probably why Gowdy is leaving. He's not a game player. Yesterday, he said, I enjoy our justice system more than our political system. And as I look back on my career, it's the jobs that seek and reward fairness that are the most rewarding. Seeking and rewarding fairness. Yeah, that's what politicians always say they're trying to do. Uh, However, they end up just dishing out unfairness. This is why Gowdy is leaving it all behind. It's Thursday, February 1st. This is the Glenn Beck Program. Kyle Olson uh, came into town yesterday. We spent some time yesterday. If you, if you uh, remember the book that um, uh, we put out called Conform, it was about Common Core and public education. Uh, Kyle was the, um, uh, the co-writer on that, and he has just started something new called Lumen Student News. He had been, um, he's the founder of EAG News, which, uh, right, EAG News, um, yeah. which is a, a, an education website that just goes into the problems of education. And he has exposed so much in our educational system and has done so much uh, good on exposing. But then I think, Kyle, you kind of fell into where I am. You're like, okay, I've exposed it. Now what? Now right. what do you do? We would hear from parents. We, and and we, the reason we started EAG was to inform parents and wake them up about what was going on in the system, mm-hmm. what kids are learning, where the money is going, what unions are doing, all of those sorts of things. And we can only do that for so long. I mean, we you're can still only, doing it, right? Right. Yeah. Okay. Um, but we can only complain for so long. Yeah. We, it's, at some point, we have to offer solutions. We have to take action. And so what we did was we started Lumen Student News as an alternative to CNN and Channel One which are in schools today. So if you're my age, we didn't have this. Um, but I say, I say to anybody who's, you know, 35, and I say Channel One, and they all know, oh, yeah, I used to watch right. that every day. What is it? Um, so both of those, CNN and Channel One, are 10-minute uh, video news, or news services in schools today. And uh, Channel One is like MSNBC, and CNN is like CNN. And there is no news service, current events news service, that has a pro-America, pro-individual rights, uh, pro-American exceptionalism viewpoint. And so that is what we're offering. And so we're talking about American history. We're talking about capitalism. We're talking about the importance of work. um, We're highlighting newsmakers that are doing incredible things um, to get kids informed about their country, about their history, and why we are the most exceptional country in the world. That has to be uh, difficult on multiple fronts. Uh, First of all, you're not going to break the NBC or CNN dominated world of the major cities. There's no way they're going to take an independent voice that is, you know, Hey, let's, let's look at this uh, from a, even a libertarian perspective. Mm -hmm. Um, And let's not say Marxism is good. Let's explain capitalism and why capitalism has gone awry and how to fix that. Mm-hmm. You're not going to get that in the major uh, cities. No, 
But um, what we have seen is, but we also heard from the major cities that there's no way Donald Trump would ever be elected president. Mm, that's true. Um, and yet America elected Donald Trump. Right. And, um, and so what we have seen around the country is that there are people who love their country all over the country. And they're saying, we want to impress those values on our kids, on our students. And With still journalistic integrity. You absolutely. St- it's, it's still journalism. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, there's no question about that. Mm-hmm. Um, but we're doing, you know, we, we have lots of things planned. For example, we have a, a, uh, almost a 20 minute special on free speech and the battle of free speech over free speech. Um, and we're telling kids the history of free speech, why the first amendment was created, why it needs to be protected and who's attacking it and what their motives are. So in true libertarian fashion, you're not a 501 C three. I mean, the left would do this and they would make it a 501 C three. So, you know, they could just have, you know, Bill and Melinda Gates pour money into it, uh, and, uh, and, you know, change education. This is, this is a for profit. Uh, so you don't have to keep asking people for money. Correct. We're doing this, uh, based on subscriptions. And so we're asking people to subscribe. Uh, we're asking parents, we're asking teachers. If you don't have kids buy a subscription for your grandkids, um, but we just, we feel like this is so important. Um, yeah, we, we don't have millions of dollars. Yeah. Uh, we are bootstrapping this. And yeah. so anyone that will subscribe, we're asking them to subscribe. So and, I, I, and in fact, um, uh, we do have a, we have a coupon code, um, <laughs> Glenn, uh, if you use Glenn, then you will get 20% off. Um, okay. but we just, where do we, you go? You go to lumen, L U M E N news.com. Okay. So this is made really targeted at what age? Middle and high school students. See, and this is the thing is, um, you know, the, the battle over free speech is playing out on college campuses. Um, and people are saying we've got to, we have to change colleges. But the reality is, no, we need to be changing middle and high school because that's where kids are forming their opinion about their country, about our economic system, about our history. And when they're only being exposed to a CNN or a Channel One that believe in multiculturalism, that believe that you know America is to is is the the problem in the world and the and is to blame for all of the ills, those opinions of their country are being formed when they're teenagers, not when they're in college. Um, so, how does this work in the schools? Can s- schools? Can sign up for it. Like if you're if you're in um, you know in a school district, you may not even know. You should ask. There's Channel One and what's the other one called? CNN. Okay, and CNN. It's, yeah. So CNN is doing one, um, and your kids are watching that for ten minutes in school. You may not even know that they're watching it every day for ten minutes. If it's not them, it's literally NBC and MSNBC that is doing Channel One. And they're the ones that are programming that 10 minutes. And th- those are your two choices, NBC or CNN. If you think, I don't really think either of those are really good, you can encourage your school. If you're a homeschooler, you can get this and get the News Digest every day for middle school and high school students. Go to Lumen, L-U-M-E-N, news.com. Uh, and sign up for it. How much is it? It's seven ninety nine for an individual, um, or it's one forty nine for a classroom. And is that for a month? A seven ninety nine a month. Okay. Seventy nine ninety nine a year. Okay. For an individual. Uh, and uh, how, how much does it cost a school? One forty nine per classroom for a year. It's it's that cheap. Nothing. I mean, it's what in, is CNN charging? Uh, CNN is free, um, oh, okay. and then Channel One is significantly more. Okay. Yeah, NBC. I mean, they only have GE behind them. They can't. They can't do that for free. Um, uh, and it's five days a week, or th- it's three days a week now, right? Uh, we do five days a week. Five days a week. Ten minutes per day. The okay. first five minutes is headlines, so we do a headline segment, and then the second five minutes is a topical segment, where we focus on Awesome America is Tuesdays. Uh, Work Matters is Mondays. We're putting a special emphasis on skilled trades. I got to get you in touch with Mike Rowe. That We're would gonna, be great. He, I, I'm sure he would join your. Uh, you, you know, your, your fourth year. We would love to work with him because um, the education system wants to perpetuate itself. And so what the K-12 system does is drill into kids' heads that you have to go get a four-year degree and because they want to perpetuate the system. Um, but the reality is there are many rewarding 
good jobs, well-paying jobs where you don't need a four-year degree and you don't need all of that student debt. And so we're putting a special emphasis on that to get kids to think about that. And no, you don't necessarily have to go get a four-year degree and have all of that debt. I am subscribing myself today, and I actually have one of the administrators of my um, uh, my children's school in today. And they're going to, I know it, they're going to ask me for a donation. I know they're going to ask me for a donation. So I'm going to ask <laughs> them you. for $149 per classroom uh, as well to start the, thank start you. the day. Um, listen, uh, uh, thank you for everything that you're doing. Thank you for being um, so true to the cause. N- you're, you're just never selling out. Um, which is really rare, um, and you're you're holding your mission to hold education accountable, and now doing something, um, you know, instead of standing around and just bitching about it. And That's I right. wholly support you, and uh, hopefully we will be able to help you in many many ways in in the days to come. Thank you. We appreciate it. Thank you. Now listen, this is Lumen News. L U M E N News. dot com. If you are somebody who has an extra seven, uh, what seven ninety nine a month, um, and you know you're one of those rich people that just won't ever afford, you just won't even miss it. Um, if you uh, if you believe that we've got to get to the kids, this is an organization that is not out beating the bushes uh, and asking for free stuff. They are they are doing uh, they're trying to provide a really good product. And they are fighting an uphill battle with CNN and NBC. I urge you, just even if you're not, even if you're never going to see it, if you're never going to watch it, support it. <laughs> LumenNews.com. LumenNews.com. I simply will not subscribe without a promo code. No. <laughs> what is the promo code? Or are you uh, do not subscribe? Oh, that's right. There is a promo code. It is promo code Glenn. Okay, yeah. now I'm in. Two ends. Two ends. Two ends. Okay. Uh, <laughs> You know, use a promo code or don't use a promo code. Doesn't matter. <laughs> Just please subscribe for seven ninety nine. This is something that is worth that as a, you know, you can't write it off, but as a donation uh, every single month. Price of a cup of coffee uh, in the wrong coffee shops. Uh, <laughs> Luminnews dot com. Thanks, Kyle. Appreciate Thank you. it. You bet. All right. Valentine's Day is always here. Isn't that great? I love that. <laughs> oh, yes. I will tell you, the, uh, the, the Valentine's Day I learned my lesson was, do you remember that first Valentine's Day living in New York? I, I You I probably, probably don't. I don't know. Well, you well, don't? Well, I mean, I, all of my Valentine's Days are incredibly important to me and yes, my I know. relationships. I so. remember the first Valentine's Day living in New York because I was standing on a subway platform in a line that oh, oh remember that <laughs> yes. and all of the guys were like oh crap i gotta get something when i got to the place that was selling flowers literally they were selling <laughs> baby's breath yeah, yeah. remember that they uh-huh. were like i got baby's breath for you i'll take it <laughs> 79 bucks i'll take it um it, valentine's day is not to be screwed around with and roses can be so expensive That's why I want to tell you right now, you can score up to 60% off all of the best-selling bouquets, the arrangements, and the gifts. 60% off on on everything that she's going to, you know, so that she'll love. An amazing selection of of candy, of sweets, of treats, and bouquets. All can be found at 1-800-Flowers. Everything you need for Valentine's Day. It's not just the flowers. 60% off of anything. Go there now, 1-800-Flowers.com, and just browse the site. See what they have. 60% off everything. Sweets, treats, flowers, gifts. You've got it. 1-800-Flowers.com. 60% off right now if you enter the promo code BACK. Enter the promo code back after you click on the radio icon on the uh, homepage and then type in B-E-C-K. Order today. Save big on flowers and everything else. 60% off at 1-800-Flowers.com. Glenn Beck Mercury. Glenn Beck. Stu, you're 41? Yes. And you didn't know about Channel 1 or CNN? 
I mean, I you know knew about CNN. No, no, no. But I, yeah, but not, not in schools. schools. We did not watch uh, TV broadcast every day in school. No. See, I I didn't. I wasn't aware of this. Um, and uh, I've talked to people who are in their 30s, and they're like, "Oh yeah, we used to watch CNN every single day." Anderson Cooper did the uh, did the morning you know news. We would you know start the day, the bell would ring, and uh, our homeroom would would watch CNN for 10 minutes, and it would give us the news of the day. Here we are. We're a group of people who are like, we don't agree with CNN. Our kids are watching it every single day. Every single day. And if it's not that, it's Channel One, which yeah. is an NBC product. And and this is, uh, is this the one that Anderson Cooper was on when he was a kid? I don't know if he was a kid. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> he they, was younger, but he, I don't know. What... He, he does a stage show that I saw, uh, mm-hmm. Anderson Cooper and Andy Cohen, mm-hmm. they, uh, and they do a show together. They're good friends, and, mm-hmm. and they go around and do, like, a, you know, stories and stuff. And they showed footage of Anderson. It seemed like he was, like, 10 years old hosting news reports on some channel, and I maybe that was it. Uh, it, it, it probably was. Yeah, yeah. That's, uh, yeah, I mean, it's an interesting thing, because, you know, I, where I always think about this is at airports. Yeah. Like, CNN has, it owns... The TV broadcast of like every airport in America. CNN pretty much owns all of the schools too. That's pretty amazing. That's yeah. something that. Uh, yeah. you, Can you imagine if Fox News said, "Hey, you know what we want to do? We want to." put <laughs> you imagine the outcry? CNN and NBC have done it, and you probably don't even know it. I didn't know it. Yeah. I, I honestly didn't yeah. know that it happened at all. Um, also, why are you know that's the. Uh, yeah, I know. That's one of those things that you wouldn't think of as a as a mm-hmm. real uh, target mm-hmm. to, to influence the culture, but they thought of all of it, haven't they? Yeah, they have. They really have. Yes, they have. Yeah. And we're playing catch up. And that's what I like about uh, Lumen News. Um, if you're a homeschooler, please subscribe uh, to Lumen News. They give you the news for you know um, middle school and high school age. Uh, the perspective from you know a a a, a perspective that. You know, I grew up with that America has done some bad things, but it's not a bad place. It's a great system, even though it's even though it's horrible in many ways. It's still better than everything else. You come up with something else better. Good. This is a libertarian uh, point of view. This is not a big state point of view. Uh, And they give you the news and then history and put it into context. And it's about 10 minutes every single day. And it's for schools and, and homeschoolers. And it's seven ninety nine a month, and I, I I just I urge you to support this and spread the news. Please support this and spread the news, and go go to your school and tell them to subscribe. Is, is homeschooling having a bit of a moment? I mean, there's a bit of oh, a lot of people time, yeah. have had been doing homeschooling for a long time, but it seems to be even it seems to be breaking through uh, the divide that I think used to exist with it, which was people who were you know, either religious or really concerned with the constitution or really engaged civically um, would have their kids homeschooled because it was a way to, you know, go around the public education system and also make sure the values, Mm -hmm. um, uh, you know, were instilled in their children, not to mention incredibly high performance, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, they study after study has shown kids that are homeschooled outperform kids that go to, to, that go to public schools. But it seems lately like, and I don't know, this is just me um, and, and it's totally anecdotal, but it just seems like a lot of people who I wouldn't necessarily put in the category of hyper engaged uh, individuals have been considering homeschooling and this hybrid thing that seems to be um, around now. That's what we're in a hybrid. But a hybrid where you your kids go to school like a couple days a week and are yeah. homeschooled a couple days a week. Yeah, uh, it's a pretty cool. It's it, there's it's a lot a of great, innovation going on in that the, sector. The, right yeah, now. there is. Yeah. There is, and you can get a better education. Yep. through that. Uh, and, um, and Pat Gray has been you know doing this with his kids for a really long time. Yeah. And he, he's talked about how back in the day it was oh impossible. My you didn't know where oh to, my ha- you had to make it like, all up yourself. You, what are your kids, Laura and Mary Ingalls? Right. What, I mean, homeschool. <laughs> now there's a lot of tools oh, to yeah. use. Yeah. Really good. Luminnews.com. Glenn Beck. Mercury. Every once in a while, one of those products uh, crosses the line from product name to just the thing that we call the product. It's like, you know, Kleenex, you know, instead of tissues, it just became Kleenex. I mean, everyone called it Kleenex. TiVo was like that. The DVR was just a TiVo for a long time. Now it's DVR. Well, you know, Q-tips are like that. When you think about cleaning your ears, like it's just Q-tips. That's not necessarily what they're called. That's the brand name. 
And, you know, you think, okay, well, this is something we all have and we all use, and it's got to be the best way to do it. Well, actually, not at all. It's not even designed to clean your ears. That's not what a Q-tip is supposed to do. Look at the box. They got a bunch of uses for it. They don't say stick one of these way down in the middle of your ear. That's not what they're recommending. Uh, Wax RX, uh, they are recommending you use Wax RX to clean your ears because that's what it's for. The Wax RX system is the method physicians trust the most, and it's just like the system they use in their offices. Uh, basically, uh, the Wax RX system has a has these waxed softening drops that break down ear wax inside the ear. It's not something that people want to talk about, but again, you're doing this at your at your house, and you want to make sure that it's actually done the right way. Go to usewaxrx.com and order your reusable ear wash system today and use the offer code RADIO, and they're going to ship it free right to your door. The promo code gets you the free standard shipping. Give it a shot. Use WaxRx.com. Promo code RADIO. It's usewaxrx.com. This is the Glenn Beck Program. Hey, uh, Stu, I just, uh, I, I don't know if you've heard the new ISIS song. Have you heard the new ISIS song? I have not. I, oh, it's I have their back collection. You have their back collection. Yeah, the box set. Did you get the box set? Uh, oh, no, it's really I just good. have. I only have this one. Is Some there... people are reporting when you open the box that it explodes. Really? Um, so yeah. uh, just just a word right. of warning. Okay. Um, so anyway, they um, uh, they've got a new song out. Uh, <laughs> good. What? No, I'm glad. I want to, I've been waiting for the new single. Oh, wait to wait mm-hmm. to hear. You're gonna you're gonna love this. They're recruiting new people and. Uh, Here's the uh, here's their new song. Listen. I'm holding up the flag, I am seeking paradise, so my brothers stay strong. Victory won't be long. Holding up the flag, I am seeking paradise, so my brothers stay strong. Victory won't be long. Together we will stand up as one with the men and women. Yeah, I just I want to read some of the uh, lyrics here because it's in English. I'm surprised. It's in English. Uh, Go and answer the call. Don't spare none. Uh, kill them all uh, is one of my favorite uh, lines. Uh, well, uh, well, uh, I shouldn't say that. Um, go answer the call. Don't spare none. Kill them all. It's time to rise. <laughs> Slit their throats and watch them die. Mm-hmm. Um, Obviously. Yeah. Uh, the Islamic State stands. It stands and demands that you worship the one whom beside there is none. We are the grandsons of men who gave all they can to rule the lands with the law of Islam. Holding the flag high, seeking paradise. Oh, my brother, stay strong. Victory won't be long. Well, it might be a little longer than ISIS thinks, seeing that they're almost out of business. But that's the reason why they have the song, you know. Because well, you got to get new people in. Yeah, uh, you know, it's been a it's been a tough recruitment. You're not going to be able to get that out of your head all day. No, can we you hear know, it again? Because I slit their throats and watch them die. <laughs> it kind of sounds. Br- there's some Broadwayish aspect to it, almost. Uh. Uh, no, no, no yeah. you, maybe you're going to a different Broadway. <laughs> no, well, usually, the Broadway shows I go to end in decapitations. Does that not happen at your? <laughs> no, I, okay. Ha. This is reminiscent, however, mm-hmm. of the Kurdish song. Uh, the, the Kurdish song that that they released a while ago, which I loved. It was yeah. a Kurdish parody of ISIS, and they were trying to insult the ISIS members. And the big insult in there, and I, it's almost too harsh to say. Okay, uh, but they should say, you should you I, look. I think it's important. All right, all right. This is this is science. <laughs> they people. said because we, political science. We are ISIS. We are ISIS, and then they would say things that ISIS would say. Right, right like right. we invaded the town of Sinjar, <laughs> which is like that. Wow. Right. First of all, what it, that's a good lead insult. Right. It's not yeah. the it's not the closing line. You no. Know. Like we're ISIS. We're ISIS. We invaded the town of Sinjar. Right. Okay. But then you go with we're ISIS. We're ISIS. We milk the goat, even if it's male. Which is a fan. Fantastic insult. <laughs> we milk the goat even if it's male. <laughs> this is why the Kurds are the best. Yes. This is why we like I them so I love the much. Kurds. They're awesome. I love the Kurds. <laughs> now, um, I would like to talk to you a little bit about hostages. Um, normally, that involves the Middle East, but this time, uh, no. Mm. This has something to do with the State of the Union Here's Representative Joe Crowley on uh, MSNBC with Chuck Todd. Listen. What do you tell that heated activist that I'm sure you see at a town hall that says don't work with them at all? Well, I think the president continues to take additional hostages. Initially, it was the roughly 800,000 Dreamers or DACA recipients. He's now expanded it to 1.8 million people who may be eligible for DACA. 
He's also wait. included into that. Wait a minute. Day. Are you calling the fact that he... You're calling the fact that he increased the number of people he would make eligible for citizenship more hostages? <laughs> oh, I think so. He's actually That's increasing rough. the number. He's also increasing the number by <laughs> including those who are in TPS, temporary protective status. He didn't have to do any of this. He's actually adding these folks uh, to the equation. Yes! And all in an attempt to end uh, certain aspects of of legal immigration into the United States. So the president is taking a willful and knowing actions to increase the number of people uh, that he will either allow to stay in the United States uh, through legislation mm -hmm. or forcibly deport through legislation or lack thereof. Uh, it's a solid job by Chuck Todd calling him out there. I'm going to give him credit because that's ridiculous. Do you think if I would have gotten on with <laughs> Chuck Todd and said, well, you know, I think what President Obama is doing is just increasing the number of hostages. <laughs> Do you think he would have said, that's a little rough? Well, at least he called him out. You know, yes. I mean, think about this. Barack Obama didn't have the DACA program for what? The first six years of his presidency? So was he didn't he, need the hostages. Right. Yeah. <laughs> so, and then when he passed DACA, when, or, and when I say passed, that's a really generous. Yeah. When uh, he, when when he, he just he did it by edict, his edict. Right. Of DACA. That meant he was taking 800,000 hostages. Yes. Okay. And now that Trump is offering a pathway to citizenship. So be hostages. Hostages. What Obama offered hostages. This is him taking more hostages. This is a great example of how what a wonderful gift we have as conservatives. Oh this, my gosh! This gift that we are given, I don't know where it comes from. I think straight from God. Maybe that he he just said, you know what? Let's make Democrats so incredibly stupid that conservatives can actually have victories on occasion. Because if Democrats had and I don't any mean, intelligence. Hang on just a second. Mm -hmm. Change that. Democratic politicians in Washington. I know. You know what no, I'm no, talking about. No, no, I do. About. Yeah, but I think that it's really important yes. because I think they're losing the Democratic base in the center of the country. Totally. country. Yeah, I think right. those people are watching the people in, in Washington going, hostages. Well, this is a great point. Like, yeah. they, I mean, again, what was it? Half of Democrats, almost half of Democrats approved of the president's speech the yes. other night. Which is, you know, again, they're looking at this and taking it seriously right they're actually because analyzing they, and they want, know it's not hostage because taking. the average person if donald trump donald trump did something that the average person wants can we just look I, we have to do something with compassion and we also have to fix the border can we just can we just compromise and come together on this? That's what he offered. Yeah, he's yeah, and he's and it's taking hostages. It's taking hostages. He's giving the left something that Jeb Bush didn't offer, that Marco Rubio didn't offer, that Lindsey Graham didn't offer, that John McCain didn't offer. A pathway to citizenship for 1.8 million uh, people uh, that were current that are currently illegal immigrants. He is this is a reach across the aisle with two hands and one leg. Okay? And what do they do? Instead of saying Wow, Mr. President, look, we have some questions with you about the border, but you know, this is an what this president is doing is he's taking a, a bipartisan approach seriously. And you know, this is we should show they could lavish praise on him and then go behind closed doors and just torpedo it. They could easily do it. <laughs> but instead of doing that and taking advantage and getting this giant thing, this giant olive branch yes. that the president is offering them, they instead go on, on 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 TV and call him a kidnapper. They call him racist. They call him basically Hitler. And this is it's so counterproductive to uh, these Democrat politicians if what they actually want is to help illegal immigrants. Now, we of course all know that they're just using them as a tool, and yeah, they you don't want to talk actually about hostages. Want to, yeah, exactly. They they want them to be. They want tell the me what, stress. Tell me what the inner city is if it isn't a group of of people that they have enslaved and taken as hostage. They, you, you they don't want to help. They don't, they don't want to help. help. They don't want to help. They want to keep them. Uh, the, the biggest example dependent. I keep coming back to, it's so simple. If you care about the cost of, of minimum wage and the people who live on minimum wage, then what you do is you pass it and fix it to inflation. And never to talk about it then again. Then you never have to deal with it again. Mm -hmm. But they, you don't That's want that. That's not what they want. That's not what they, they want. They want a political issue to come back and say, we need to raise it again every two years. Right. And so the idea that, you know, talking about getting a conservative policy out of this White House, it's such an interesting path. Because if Trump comes out and says something that we all used to call liberal, 
a pathway to citizenship for illegal immigrants. That used to be a liberal thing. I don't know what it is now, but it's a liberal thing. And the president comes out and suggests that. The Democrats are, 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 these politicians in Washington are so stupid that they, instead of embracing him and and furthering that uh, instinct, they come out and call him Hitler. And then Trump gets so annoyed and pissed off, he goes the other way and we get something really conservative. And here's, here's for, for Democrats and for, uh, for honest people in the press. Yes, I am talking about you, that, that one. Anyway, um, <laughs> you over there, you the one hiding, there. right? Uh, <laughs> one that just lost your job. <laughs> right. um, uh, l- let me ask you this, and 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 I ask this as an honest question. It's not rhetorical. So, Stu, help me out. Okay. Can you think of a single example where Barack Obama looked to the right and said, "I'm going to give you something that you really." really want i will sit down at the table and i will give you something that you really want i can tell you that i heard eight years of you can sit in the back of the car you drove this thing into a ditch we're going to listen to you now that's that's what that's what i heard and i think many wow. half of the country heard mm. um from barack obama we weren't even wanted at the table here's this guy saying your number one request a pathway to citizenship, something the Demo- the Republicans would never, ever, 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 ever give you. I will give it to you, but you have to meet me halfway. You have to do common sense border security. We just have to know who's coming in. The average American understands that. The average American is screaming for that. And we and I can understand they still don't want that. I mean, the Democrats don't want border security. However, we don't want the pathway to citizenship, right? I'm getting right. talking generally here, yeah. but I mean, like the idea that the Republicans don't want that. They've never wanted it. So this is a compromise. It is reaching across aisles. It's everything the left and the media says that that, we, that they want. But in reality, we know they don't. And when you ask your question, uh, your non-rhetorical question about Barack Obama, I can't think of one freaking example. I can't either. I can't think of one thing. I can think of if think you can this. in the audience. Please let me know one major thing that the president said, you know what? Let me talk to them. Just let me talk to the Tea Party people. Let here's me, a let huge me, thing you want. Here it is. Yeah, I'm and, giving it to you. And here's the thing. I don't want this. I don't think this is, you know, necessarily something that my party It's not going to make me popular with my party. But in the spirit of coming together and getting something done, I'm going to give you this big thing, but you have to give me this. And I'll put your priority as pillar number one, mm-hmm. and my priority is pillar number two. I cannot think of a single thing. Let me give you one example. Barack Obama, the individual mandate, the thing that the Tea Party hated. Tea Party hated the individual mandate. We fought against it all the time. We said, get rid of just this individual mandate. It's the worst part of Obamacare. We said it all the time. Unconstitutional. We fought against it constantly. He would never give one inch for that. And what was amazing about it is he ran for president opposing the individual mandate. He actually shared the position with the right on the individual mandate when he was going against Hillary Clinton. And Obamacare included it, and because Obamacare included it, he wouldn't even give up something he ran against to try to bridge that gap. And here's the president going, now the President Trump going the exact opposite way, giving a huge chip up. Not even, he's starting a negotiation by giving them exactly what they want, and they still call him Hitler every 10 seconds. It's amazing because the reason why we always lose is be, and this is the reason why I had a problem with this uh, deal. One of the reasons why I had a problem with this is because it was our, our border security was pillar number two. I'll talk to you about yeah. road to citizenship after pillar number one, our pillar number one, security, because we keep making this compromise and you never do it. They're not even taking the the opportunity to screw us by being shifty. They're just openly <laughs> saying. Nope, mm. we don't want it because you said so. It's going to push Donald Trump away from the Democrats, and you're not going to get jack from him because he doesn't usually offer, you know, the sweet uh, very often, more than once. You reject him, you pound him like this, call him all kinds of names, a kidnapper holding people hostage. 
uh, he's not going to he's he's not going to keep reaching out. And Just this is foolish. And this, by the way, is good for us because the Democrats acting that way. I, I don't you know I don't like it societally. I don't like it. But when you're talking about policy. It's, it makes Donald Trump a lot less likely uh, to go along with this. I also think that it it really hurts the Democratic Party and to the point to where they're just going to, you know, they're going to be a fringe. They're going to be a fringe party. Both of these parties are so fringe now. Both of these parties are in so much trouble. The Democrats are in much bigger trouble than the Republicans are. Volatility in the stock market, wild swings in Bitcoin, the constant turmoil in Washington. I don't know if you noticed this, but gold came off its uh, best year since 2010. It's up almost $100 since mid-December with lots of room to run. Um, I told you at the beginning of the year that we are going to start seeing inflation um, and possibly bad inflation. We're going to the stock market is in a is in a melt up right now where everybody you remember what Bitcoin felt like? And then Bitcoin fell apart. Uh, that's kind of what the stock market's going to feel like. When these things happen, that's when gold, everybody goes all in on uh, gold. Now, I'm not an all in guy. I don't recommend a guy. The gold line doesn't recommend an all in. What gold line uh, recommends is spreading out your risk, diversifying long term. That's what gold is. Gold is, an ins- to me, an insurance policy against the insane. And the insane and insanity is the key word of the world today. I mean, we're in, we're in chaos. That's when people look for stability. And it is the hedge against inflation. And inflation is coming. And that's why gold is rising as rapidly as it is. I want you to call Goldline now and find out about their uh, product. Find out if gold or silver is right for you. Great prices uh, on gold. Best prices they've ever offered. 866-GOLDLINE. 1-866-GOLDLINE. 866-465-3546. Read their important risk information. Find if gold or silver is right for you. But it is coming into its time right now and i think gold is going to have a very good year or so call them now um please don't listen to my advice on investment because i have absolutely i don't know my butt from my elbow 866 goldline or goldline.com glenn beck mercury (laughs) so stop stop this is unbelievable (laughs) no stop stop glenn Back. You're going to enjoy this coming up. <laughs> You're going to enjoy it. Oh, really? Something big happening in uh, the Meriden Township uh, in the police department today. This is up in Michigan. They're going to publicly apologize to one person today, even though the apology is 14 years too late. They are apologizing. They're apologizing to Brianne Randall Gay. She filed a complaint with the police department many, many, many years ago against the disgraced USA uh, gymnastics doctor, Larry Nasser. This was in 2004. Um, they... Um, um, uh, they heard her complaint, but did really nothing about it. They, she said he touched her inappropriately during a routine exam. The police department investigated, and they, they talked to Nasser and they took his word because he's a doctor. And he claimed she's 17. She doesn't understand the medical treatment. She's not comfortable with her own body. And they believed him, and they dropped the case. If someone would have believed Brianne that day instead of the doctor... How many assaults would have been prevented? If it could have stopped, it could have stopped more than decades worth of emotional and physical torture for so many girls. But no one stood up for Brianne and Larry Nasser went on to sexually assault more than 100 girls under the guise of medical treatment. For the last couple of weeks, famous faces have lined up in the courtroom, patiently waiting to speak about their assault at the hands of Nasser. He was ultimately sentenced to 40 
to 175 years in prison, and I hope he gets every day of the 175. Let's keep him alive. He pleaded to um, uh, criminal sexual assault, assault involving uh, the girls under the age of 16. He is a despicable human being that deserves his sentence. But the biggest tragedy is how many people were aware of this situation. Why, why didn't somebody speak out? And hats off to the press. If it wasn't for investigative press that actually cared, uh, they would have never gotten to the bottom of this. I think the biggest lesson we can learn from this story and from the so many people that have come out in the hashtag Me Too movement is what Dietrich Bonhoeffer said, not to speak is to speak. Complicity in evil acts is evil itself. It's why the First Amendment is so important, and it's not about stupid, foolish things. We all have to do a better job at being brave and speaking up and speaking out no matter what the consequences are when we know something isn't right. It's Thursday, February 1st. This is the Glenn Beck Program. Yesterday, I had my research team go in and look at the couple of stories that the president told during the State of the Union address um, because I thought they were really powerful. And, I, and, I, and, and he told two stories of illegal immigrants, two stories. And the press and everybody else yesterday spent all day yesterday um, you know, talking about how he is uh, racist because he thinks that all dreamers are gang members. That's not what he said. He didn't even get anywhere close to saying anything like that. Now they're saying, oh, he's taking all these people as hostages. As hostages, he is offering you a pathway to citizenship, which is what you've all said you've wanted. So I asked, the researchers, I said, could you give me a little, give me a little bit more on two of these stories? And I want to show you, this is what America understands that the press and the parties refuse to. It's not that they can't, it's self-imposed. They're smart enough, but they refuse to recognize the difference. Let me tell you two immigrants, illegal immigrant stories. The first one involves the two girls in Long Island. They were best friends, and it was September 13th. It was 2016. Uh, it involved Kayla, uh, uh, Kayla Cueva, she's 16, and Nisa Mickin, Mickens, she was 15. They were hanging out one night in September, uh, and they were hanging out at her house, Kayla's house. It was an ordinary Tuesday evening. They were students at a place called Brentwood High School in Brentwood, Long Island. And Kayla had been having some troubles with the local MS-13 gang. Not something that you mess with. And, and while she was having problems, Nisa always had her back. They had exchanges on social media with MS-13, but they were speaking out because something was wrong. So they're over at the house. It's 8.30 at night. They decide to go for a walk, and I'm sure they do what all girls do at their age. They talked about boys. They talked about school. They talked about basketball because Kayla uh, was getting ready to try out for the varsity team. I'm sure they talked about um, uh, Nisa's birthday plans because she was turning 16 the next day. As they're walking down the street, behind them, a car pulls up, and it's MS uh, MS-13 gang members. And they call in to the head of the gang and they say, hey, we just spotted these two. Can we take care of them? And the gang leader says, yeah, absolutely. So they pull up behind, right behind them. The car stops and these guys jump out and they have baseball bats and machetes. Now, here are these two 15 and 16 year old girls all by themselves. They grabbed Nisa first. They bludgeoned her repeatedly with the, with the baseball bats and the machetes. Police show up later and said, you, we couldn't even, they, 
They beat her face so badly that we couldn't even recognize her. <sighs> Kayla runs. She escapes. She hides in the woods behind a house. She's 50 yards away from, from her friend who is just now laying dead in the street, beaten to death. The guys are faster, they overtake her, they grab her, throw her to the ground, and they beat and then hack her to death. It took six months, but these guys were finally arrested. Three of them were illegal immigrants. Kayla and Nisa's, uh, Nisa's parents were at the State of the Union, and it was Kayla's mom who said, I am not here for anybody's political gain. I just want what's right to be done. Everyone should put their political agenda aside and think about what's going on in our country. Now, what's going on in our country? We have open borders. And we don't want people coming here illegally. We need to make sure that we know who's coming into our country. That has nothing to do with hating Hispanics, saying that all people who are immigrants are gang members. You're living in the 1900s if you think that's what that was, this story is about. That's not what this story is about. We don't want criminals. We don't want gang members coming over here and killing our children on the streets. It's pretty simple. That has nothing to do with dreamers. These guys were not dreamers. They were killers. Now, let me give you a second immigrant story. This was not billed as an immigrant story, but another story from the State of the Union. This one uh, was about a 13-year-old boy named Ji Song Ho. The year was 1996, and he was living in North Korea. He was living, just, I didn't even say living. He was trying to survive the famine in North Korea. The famine, he lived with his, his parents, his younger brother, his sister, his grandmother had already died from starvation. We found out later that Kim Jong-il uh, actually starved this whole region of his country, kind of like the Russians did. Communists like to do this. They just starve people to death. They cut off all of the food. And death was closing in on this kid's family. They were, they were living off of corn stalks, not corn, corn stalks and roots. His family spent most of the day just lying on the floor. They were too weak to stand. But he was in charge of going out and finding food or finding something that they could possibly trade for food. And he would wait in the middle of the night in freezing weather. And he would wait for the right time to raid the coal train. The only time the trains weren't guarded by armed police was the pre-dawn hours. And so when the train would move out of the station at night, all of these starving people would run out of the shadows and they would crawl up on top of the coal car and they would bring these little bags or whatever they had and they would put a couple of handfuls of coal in and they would throw it down off the track to somebody who was part of their family and they would take that coal and they would exchange it for food. That's the only thing that kept them alive. Well, he got up and um, he grabbed his sack. He tossed it down. And then he fell. He, uh, he actually he didn't just fall. He, he fainted from hunger. And he fell down in between the cars and onto the tracks and the train was moving he said he woke up to the sound of his sister screaming in horror for help all of these starving people that had were on the train just to get food they all came to his aid he said he felt the warmth of his blood spilling out the train had taken an arm and a leg as it ran over him on the tracks but it wasn't clean at all these starving people picked him up. They could all barely walk. They were so weak. And they brought him to a doctor in the town. He, it's not a hospital. It's just a guy. He had no medication at all. He couldn't dull the pain. And he said, I've got to saw your arm and your leg off cleanly. He said he could feel his spine rattling with the teeth coming across. <sighs> Thank you.
he somehow or another survived. And his weak father fashioned two wooden crutches. And he depended on those crutches just to beg in the streets. He couldn't do anything. When he was 17, he managed to illegally cross into the border in China. He found an underground church there where Christians gave him food. He said, the animals are fed better in China than North Koreans are. You'd think he has a chance to escape. He's, he's with people who will feed him and care for him. He, he's missing an arm and a leg. He took that food back over across the border so he could feed his family. That's when they caught him. They took him into prison for 20 days and they tortured him. That's when he realized there is no life, there is no future for North Korea. He waited six years and G and his younger brother escaped again and they made it into China. They planned to travel to South Korea, but he said, I'm going to slow you down and we're going to get caught. Please go in front. Just go. He went by himself. He wound his way through China. He found Christians there that would help him. He had to go through the jungles of Laos on crutches. He finally goes into Thailand. He, he makes it. He finds his way to the South Korean embassy in Bangkok where the officials say this ghost like uh, appearance of a man just showed up. They transferred, uh, they transferred him to uh, Seoul where he spent time in the hospital and then they fitted him with an artificial arm and leg. He was reunited in Seoul with his brother. A few years later, they managed to smuggle out their mother and their sister. But G's father was, escape, uh, was caught escaping and they tortured him to death in prison. He's an illegal alien. He's, he, he crossed the border in China. He crossed the border of Laos. He crossed the border of, uh, of South Korea. He was there illegally. Do you think the South Koreans were talking about him as an illegal alien? Do you think if he would have made it on a boat to our shore, do you think we would have said to him, get out of here, there's nothing here for you, you got to come through the front door, we would have embraced that man because that man was escaping a horror. There are people that are trying to get to America from South America, from Mexico, that are trying to escape the horror of whatever is happening in their town because it's absolute lawlessness. Do you really think Americans want to shut the door on those people? We don't. Do, do you see there's a difference between a guy like G and the then the two guys that were gang members from MS, uh, MS-13, don't you think? Can't you see a difference between those two? Can't you see a difference between somebody even coming here illegally who were just trying to escape poverty because they had no opportunity for their kids back where they lived? And so with an open border and with administrations time and time again, basically encouraging people, we're not going to do anything. You don't think you would cross that border if your ch kids had a chance to better themselves and actually live like Americans do? Conservatives and liberals, we're not heartless. Americans have a bigger heart than just about anybody else. We just want to know who's here. That's it. And if you are trying to come, if you are one of the poor, huddled masses yearning to breathe free, we will give you a chance. That's the only promise America gives. A chance to prove to yourself and to others, I am not what the last place said I was. There is something in me that is special. That's who we want here. And I think America is tired of the games. 
And I do not think that the average Democrat in the middle of the country is looking at these two guys, these, these three people, these, these two stories. I don't believe that they just think, oh, look at that. He's calling all immigrants gang members. No. He's trying to show compassion for both the people that live here in America that are killed, slaughtered in our streets by people who should not be here and showing you an immigrant with great progress that is being slaughtered in his own country. Homeowners are refinancing in droves, and you should be. Uh, According to uh, the Ellie Mae Origination Insight Report, uh, mortgage refinances accounted for 40% of all closed loans in December alone. I will tell you, refi right now. If you have any kind of an adjustable mortgage, refinance right now. Um, The money is going to start moving a little faster um, because of the tax reform. It's really good. People are going to start spending money again. They're going to have more. The um, the uh, businesses are going to start spending more because they have more. And that means too many dollars chasing too few goods, which is the definition of inflation. When inflation happens, you have to raise the interest rates. We're expecting four Fed rates, uh, uh, four Fed uh, rate hikes this year. That's, that, that could put some people out of their home because they could afford it with the low mortgage rate. Please refi right now, and it's really easy. Make a 10-minute phone call to the salary-based mortgage consultants at American Financing right now. Time to start shopping for those loan programs, and the rates is right now. American Financing, 800-906-2440. 800-906-2440. AmericanFinancing.net. American Financing Corporation, NMLS 182334. www.nmlsconsumeraccess.org. Glenn Beck Mercury. Glenn Beck. That's an interesting uh, point you made with the two stories from the State of the Union. I don't think I've heard anyone talk about the one from North Korea being an immigrant story. It's an illegal immigrant story. And there was a moment there, I will be honest with you, where I was like, is Glenn about to say that he thinks we should allow illegal immigrants to stay here? What is that? But in reality, it shows the truth, which is it's not that we're against people coming to our country. It's not that we're against people from other cultures joining us. We like that. We love that here in America. But we want to have the ability to make a determination between the guy escaping North Korea and the guy who's in MS-13. We need to have that ability. We need to have some process yeah, they're there. Both, they both are illegal immigrant stories. I don't want the gang mil- members. <laughs> right. I do want the guy with one arm and one leg who's never really going to do anything except remind us how great freedom Glenn is. Back. Mercury. Trust is an important thing. It's something that we do a lot more as human beings than I think most people realize. I mean, you drive down the road and there's a little yellow line between a car coming at you at 50 miles an hour and you're on your side of the road and they're on their side of the road and we just trust that they'll stay on their side of the road. Uh, Their self-interest will do it, whatever it is. Uh, We don't die most of the time when we're driving and this is a positive thing. It's hard though to find people you can trust when it comes to really complicated transactions like real estate. I mean, what do you do? You know, you're talking about your biggest investment in your entire life and you're trusting this to someone because you don't understand what any of those forms mean. I never do. No one does. You don't even, half the people don't even read them. You need someone who can walk you through a big transaction like buying or selling a home and make sure there are people that you can trust that have been screened that aren't just some random person you're looking up in the phone book. Realestateagentsitrust.com is a company that Glenn actually started because he was trying to sell his house and had some issues. And basically what they do at realestateagentsitrust.com, it's a network of 1,200 agents. And Glenn and his team have gone through and 
and kind of gone through and, and found the best ones in each area. And you go and you put in your address and you put in your area where you are and you find an agent you can trust. It's your biggest investment. You need to take it seriously. Go to realestateagentsitrust.com. It's realestateagentsitrust.com. Give it a shot. realestateagentsitrust.com. This is the Glenn Beck Program. Welcome to the program. Glad you're here. Uh, I, I, I want to try to get to this. I don't know if we're going to get to it today, but the the uh, Clark County um, um, coroner has refused to release the the coroner's report on the Las Vegas shooter. This was a court order release, and they said they're not releasing it because it hasn't been finalized. Well, okay. First of all, it's been five months. How are you not? Uh, what do you? What do you mean you haven't finalized the coroner's report? Especially since it's been, I think, four months since they cremated the body. What are you doing? Putting the ashes back together? How, how do you not? How is that not done? There's nothing new you can look at. You burn the body up. If you had enough flex seal tape, maybe you maybe could. Do that. Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> By the way, I saw on Pat Gray Unleashed yesterday. A, they did a uh, an uh, attempt to see if the Flex Seal commercial can be uh, uh-huh. recreated with the actual Flex Seal product. Which you knew wasn't possible. It went exactly the way I pictured it would go. Yep. <laughs> what did you do? Yep. What, what did you do? Well, have you, you've seen the Flex Seal. Yeah, that's the one where they right? take a screen door and they make it into a boat. I saw this boat in half. <laughs> yeah. Right. Okay. <laughs> so we decided to test it not on a boat, but we just did the we did the bucket test where they have that massive hole in it and the water's gushing out the side. And he takes one, you know, maybe a two-inch square piece of Flex Seal tape, slaps it on as the water's gushing out, instantly sealed. I'm like, that can't happen. That cannot happen. Please tell me you didn't do this in one of my studios. <laughs> oh. Um, uh, I, 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 I didn't do it in one of your <laughs> oh, studios. You did it in that outside area, <laughs> right, remember, that, Pat? Yes. Oh, that was It's called electrocution, place Pat. outside <laughs> in the grass. Right. So we took, a, we took a, a garbage can, and I put a knife hole in it. Just a knife hole. So, you know, real thin Is slice. Is this a garbage can that yeah. you paid for? Yes. I, I have you since paid for the garbage can. <laughs> All right. Okay. <laughs> so it's got this little leak in it. We slap on Flex Seal. Continues to leak. Put on another piece of Flex Seal. Continues to leak. Slap on another one. Continues to leak. And then we sawed, a cont- we sawed that container in half. <laughs> and we taped it back up with Flex Seal. And it. Completely leaked. leaked. The whole time. Every single test. Every single test failed. Was a big giant failure. So you're (laughs) saying one of those commercials that says, but wait, there's more. Uh Uh-huh. Isn't honest? Isn't isn't quite honest. But holy cow. They keep showing it. And I I watch it. And and I think to myself, they're showing the tape stop the gushing. It has to Can I tell you something? You guys are you you, you guys are missing something big here. I think you have I think you did it wrong because I'm I don't know if you've read this, but Chip Gaines. Mm-hmm. Is leaving the show. Oh my god! That's for right. What? Well, he's doing well, he his wife. Is, isn't he? made, no, she's doing uh, some face cream thing. No, oh. <laughs> it's uh, Flex Seal. He's going to Flex Seal. He's going to Flex Seal. <laughs> he's going to be building houses with Flex Seal. <laughs> so I'm pretty tell, sure that's true. I will sure tell you true. that that came up on my TV yesterday. I was glued to it. I, no pun intended. I was sitting there watching that. I had to find out how the Flex Seal worked. Right? I was totally mesmerized by that. Segment What's yesterday. interesting is a lot of listeners were tweeting out that it was coming up, and Flex Seal actually liked the. Oh no. <laughs> And I'm like, and you don't want to like this because no. you don't want people looking at this demonstration. I know it's not going to work. <laughs> and of course it didn't. It, really it didn't. just didn't. So and You should get Flex Seal on. I'd if like they to. liked it, I would too. Yeah. you should tweet them and say, hey, Flex Seal, Come did on. we do what, something what we do wrong? wrong? Yeah, yeah that, Come I'm in here definitely willing to do yeah. that. Yeah. Definitely yeah. willing to do that. Uh, all right. Uh, so Pat Gray from <laughs> Pat Gray Unleashed is uh, joining us. Pat, maybe you can help me out. I asked us to an hour ago. If you could come up with, I cannot think of any other president doing this, but let alone that, I cannot think of anything that I can compare with Barack Obama on what Donald Trump did at the State of the Union. He took the number one thing that the Democrats wanted, DACA, times it by, what, three? Yeah. Then offered a, a, plan, a, a path to citizenship. Mm-hmm. So he took everything they wanted, everything that they wanted, and he led with it and said, that's pillar number one. Knowing, Over the wall. Right. Knowing that 
everybody who supports him, pillar number one, should be the security. Secure the border. Then we can talk about that. He didn't do that. He put their priority first and said, now, I've just given you something that my side's not going to like. Now you have to give us what your side doesn't like. Can you think of anything where President Obama reached out to the Tea Party people and said, look, uh, okay, I want to talk to you about this constitutional thing. I want to talk to you about the, I want to talk to you about the one part in Obamacare that I agreed with you with when I was on the campaign trail, uh, that it's unconstitutional and it would cause all kinds of problems, the individual mandate. I agreed with you. Now I'm in office. Everybody wants it. I'm going to give you one thing that is your hot button, but you're going to have to join me here. Can you think of any outreach at all? No, but I can think of the opposite. When he, when he told Republicans they had to get in the back of the car because right? you drove it into the ditch. Right. And now you're saying you want... No, you're We're not, not driving. Listening. We're not, not listening, listening to you. you. You're going to be in the back of the... You're right. going to be in the back of the bus, essentially. Right. Yeah. No, I... I can't think of anything. I, and I couldn't I don't think, think he ever did. Either. Yeah, I don't think... I don't think it ever happened. But luckily, we have a very large audience. And that mm-hmm. audience uh, had at least one person on Twitter who <laughs> presented uh, the opposing case. Okay. Uh, Give it is, to me. I'd a, like this. This is a... <laughs> Now, this is a story from Real Clear Politics by a liberal author trying to prove that Barack Obama was bipartisan. So therefore, you would assume these, this is the best arguments you got. Sure. Right? Sure. Okay. Uh, it says, yes, Obamacare passed without any Republican support, but that's the single example of purely partisan legislation in the Obama era. Every other <laughs> bill signed by Obama came with at least one Republican vote. Well, that's now, not, first wait, of all, wait, not the same is, thing, sorry. No, wait, it's not wait. at all. <laughs> that's not the same it's thing. It's not the same standard. And by that standard, by the way, the uh, a 20-week abortion ban was not only bipartisan, but three times as bipartisan. Yeah, it was overwhelmingly uh, <laughs> they bipartisan. Got three Democrats on that one. <laughs> right. So, I mean, one vote from the other side is not a bipartisan bill. But right. again, that's not the standard here. The standard is... We, he, the, Obama did he did you reach to, out to did, the right no, no, no. side? Did, yeah. Did yeah. he reach out? Did he offer something that he knew his side would not like? Right. That mm-hmm. was the number one priority of the other side. Right. right. And then went above and beyond yeah, what they were asking and, for. And they okay. did three times as much. Right. Okay. So here we go. And put it first. Mm-hmm. Bipartisan thing number one from, uh, from, from Barack Obama. The Recovery Act, the stimulus plan. Mm -hmm. Why? Because uh, they reduced the size of the package by $100 billion to try to make the compromise. Now, this is, of course, the right opposed the stimulus plan. Now, there were Mm -hmm. some moderate Republicans who went along with that at the time. That's true. Uh, But it it was a thing that started the Tea Party. I think it, was it really like, was. Yeah. It was the bailout and the okay. stimulus yeah. that started the Tea Party. And again, let's look at the definition. Is the number one priority of the right spending $787 billion on a stimulus pro- project? Now, it's a bad question to ask right now because the right <laughs> seems to really want a $1.5 right. trillion, But certainly at that no. time, that was not their number one no. priority. And, you know, for this to be apples to apples, it would have to be he not only he not only said, OK, we'll give up the stimulus package, the 787. Mm-hmm. But I'm going to give you two trillion dollars in cuts. <laughs> cuts, but you have to give me something else. <laughs> but you right. have to give no, me okay. health care. So absolutely does not meet the definition of what we're talking about. Next up, uh, uh, the Dodd Frank Wall Street reform bill. Oh my god, is their big bipartisan because Dodd it had Frank <laughs> because it had three Republican votes. Now again, the 20 week abortion plan had three Democratic votes. I don't see anybody calling that bipartisan, other than the president who's trying to to, to make that case. Um, and their, their other part, again, wall street reform was not the number one, uh, cause, cause for the right at that time by any means. Next up, um, a bipartisan surveillance reform law, essentially an anti Snowden law, um, mm. where they came up with the extra spying and ability and they made small concessions to privacy advocates. Okay. No. Okay. So first of all, these are not, this has to be something that is the priority of, of the, the other side. Right. And something that you know you're going to get killed for. And something that's offered by the chief executive. Yeah. Right. So right? none of this stuff. There's none of this he wouldn't even he meet with anyone. Right. He never sat down right. and met with a single person who was a constitutionalist and said, Mr. President, here's what we're saying. Here's what we're saying. Never. Never. 
He mocked us. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, and you know, so let, let me give you a couple more. These are, they get good here. Now, <laughs> the number one priority of the right, I think you'd all say, yeah. don't ask, don't tell. Because he worked with S- Susan Collins, who also uh, wanted don't ask, don't tell. How is that even remotely close to what we're talking about here? Next up, uh, a major food safety bill assigned, uh, designed to give the FDA more power to recall tainted goods. If that was, <laughs> if that was a number how, how many one times priority did I talk right? about that? Yeah. Yeah. We talked about if the, we could just give the Obama federal, administration. If we could just give federal <laughs> agencies more power. <laughs> yeah, that's yeah. your. And again, like, but it, you know, uh, again, it has to be something your side doesn't want. Correct. Right. So, like, yeah. of, of course, his side wanted the FDA to have more power. Of course, his side it, wanted don't ask, what, don't tell. Here's what. Here's what this would be akin to. I'm going to cut the corporate tax rate to 15 or 20 percent, 21 percent. I'm going to cut the corporate tax rate and I'm going to cut the uh, uh, the uh, capital gains tax. I'm going to cut both of those. My side is going to go crazy because they're going to say this is just a handout to big companies. They're going to go crazy. But in exchange for that, I want you on board with health care. If he would have made that, we would not have been able, you know, I'm not saying that we would have taken that deal. But it's a legitimate offer. But it's offer, a legitimate right? offer. This is a legitimate mm-hmm. offer. Mm-hmm. This is, this mm-hmm. is, I'm going to take what you want and I'm going to times it by three and throw in something else that my side should kill me for. And I'm going to offer it, but you got to give me this border security and not even the whole wall. You just have to secure the border for me and we have to know who's coming in here. That is perfect. That is how you negotiate. That's how you negotiate. Uh, Next up is the bill to reduce uh, racially discriminatory uh, discriminatory disparity and mandatory prison sentences between crack and powder, powder cocaine convictions. And this is true. Obama style bipartisanship because there were conservatives. Mike Lee, I think was one of them. I'm one who, who was very, up, very concerned about this issue. It is, it was mm-hmm. a, a ridiculous standard at the time. Um, however, it is not, it, it is not something that his side didn't want. And yeah. this is, this is what, what bipartisanship to Barack Obama was, is I will allow you to vote for the things that I want. I want this prison reform and a few Republicans will come along with me and I'll call it bipartisan. But you're not changing what you want. That's not a, 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 a negotiation. No, bi- That's just you doing what you want and some people agree with you. That's mm-hmm. totally different than, than what Trump is doing. Trump, unless you believe that Trump is a big-time amnesty guy, which you might, but if you be- unless you believe that, he's giving up something that, he, that he is crucial to his hang on. platform. Yeah, hang, hang on just a second. Even if he is a big time amnesty guy, he that shows that he is willing to take on his own side. Yes, sir. He's willing to uh, to take the hit because he believes it's right, and he knows all of you have been in my office before. Before I was president, I know what you. I'm going to give you what we've all talked about. I'm going to give it to you, but you have to give their side, this side. You have to give them security. And it's perfectly reasonable to do that. And they call him a kidnapper now. They call him <laughs> mm-hmm. a hostage taker. It is unbelievable. And what was it Obama always said? I'll listen to any reasonable, any anybody reasonable from, yeah. from, from the Republican side. What reasonable to him meant agreed with him. Agreed with him. Yeah. And, and But I'm not going to listen to your extreme points of view. Well, an extreme point of view was the, the conservative Consti- side was just something constitutional. The constitutional. It's like you, and that the, happened every time. Yeah, the, uh, an extreme point of view was we should not have the government mandate yep. because that makes it a, 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 an inco- incumbent on every citizen to remain a citizen to buy s- some product. That's not in the Constitution. That should never be in the Constitution. You know what? You have to buy this cell service. To be an American. Uh, No, I don't think so. (laughs) I don't think so. Pat Gray Unleashed. Hopefully some other uh, TV products will be uh, tested on today's program. Uh, You can watch it uh, on the Blaze TV, listen on Blaze Radio, and on the podcast through iTunes and anywhere else you get them. 
Simply Safe, the home security company uh, that I have worked with for a long time. They had about 10 employees when they first came into my office in New York. And uh, and I just I love the founder so much. He is he is so great. Um, he's this he comes from a tinkering family. Tinkerers used to be a, a something that was a proud American tradition um, that they would they would just tinker with things. And pretty soon they'd fix something or invent something that was really important. His grandfather actually was instrumental in World War Two, invented something very, very important for the uh, for the tank war. Um, that is, I, I think is still in all of the tanks. So he grew up in this family and he wanted to do something. Um, and so he was at, yeah, I don't remember Harvard or MIT. And, um, his friends asked him, Hey, we're getting robbed on this street and we can't put in a security system because we can't wire it and stuff. Can you help us with something? And he said, sure. So he just went down and just got some parts and he started making things and it worked. And then pretty soon everybody on the street was like, Hey, can you make one of those for me? That's when he realized, I've, I've actually got a business here, and it's Simply Safe. What they have become is, is the fastest growing security company in America, and they have completely rebuilt and redesigned to their latest version, is really small. It has safeguards to protect against any kind of power outage, down Wi-Fi, cut landlines. Um, they've taken bats and hammers to it. They have really tested this thing. It's really super small, so it's practically invisible. But when the sirens go off or when the cameras click, when somebody opens up a door or window that they're not supposed to, the police are called. It has everything in it you need, but it doesn't have a contract. You, you um, control your own life and your own safety with simplysafebeck.com. Go there now to order at simplysafebeck.com. Glenn Beck Mercury. Glenn Beck. FISA memo explained tonight at 5 p.m. only on the Blaze TV. Please win, Eagles. Please win. Once before I die. Please win a Super Bowl. Please. Go Patriots. Glenn Beck Mercury.